Every data scientist has different preferences when it comes to their programming environment. Vim versus Emacs, tabs versus spaces, virtual env versus anaconda. Today, I want to share with you my environment for working with data and doing machine learning. You most definitely do not need to copy my setup, but perhaps some bits of it can serve as useful inspiration for your development environment. To start with, we need to talk about pip. Pip is Python's package manager. It has come built into Python for quite a while now, so if you have Python, you likely have pip already. Pip installs packages like TensorFlow and NumPy, Pandas and Jupyter, and many, many more, along with their dependencies. Many Python resources are delivered in some form of pip packages. Sometimes you may see a file called requirements.txt in someone's folder of Python scripts. Typically, that file outlines all of the pip packages that that project uses, so you can easily install everything needed by using pip install r requirements.txt. As part of this ecosystem, there's a whole world of version numbers and dependencies. I sometimes need to use different versions of a given library for different projects that I'm working on. So I need a way to organize my groups of packages into different isolated environments. There are two popular options currently for taking care of managing your different pip packages, virtual env and anaconda. Virtual env is a package that allows you to create named virtual environments where you can install pip packages in an isolated manner. This tool is great if you want to have detailed control over which packages you install for each environment you create. For example, you could create an environment for web development with one set of libraries and a different environment for data science. This way, you won't need to have unrelated libraries interacting with each other, and it allows you to create environments dedicated to specific purposes. Now, if you're primarily doing data science work, Anaconda is also a great option. Anaconda is created by Continuum Analytics, and it is a Python distribution that comes pre-installed with lots of useful Python libraries for data science. Anaconda is popular because it brings many of the tools used in data science and machine learning with just one install, so it's great for having a short and simple setup. Like virtual env, Anaconda also uses the concept of creating environments so as to isolate different libraries and versions. Anaconda also introduces its own package manager called Conda from where you can install libraries. Additionally, Anaconda still has the useful interaction with pip that allows you to install any additional libraries which are not available in the Anaconda package manager. So, which one do I use? Virtual env or Anaconda? Well, I often find myself testing out new versions of TensorFlow and other libraries across both Python 2 and Python 3. So ideally, I would like to be able to try out different libraries on both virtual env and Anaconda. But sometimes those two package managers don't necessarily play nicely with each other on one system. So I have opted to use both, but I managed the whole thing using a library called pyenv. Conceptually, pyenv sits atop both virtual env and Anaconda, and it can be used to control not only which virtual env environment or Anaconda environment is in use, but it also easily controls whether I'm running Python 2 or Python 3. One final aspect of pyenv that I enjoy is the ability to set a default environment for a given directory. This causes that desired environment to be automatically activated when I enter a directory. I find this to be way easier than trying to remember which environment I want to use every time I work on a project. So which package manager do you use it really comes down to your workflow and preferences. If you typically just use the core data science tools and are not concerned with having some extra libraries installed that you don't use, Anaconda can be a great choice, since it leads to a simpler workflow for your needs and preferences. But if you're someone who loves to customize your environment and make it exactly like how you want it, then perhaps something like virtual env or even pyenv may be more to your liking. There's no one right way to manage Python libraries, and there's certainly more out there than the options that I just presented. As different tools come and go, it's important to remember that everyone has different needs and preferences. So choose for yourself what tools out there serve you best. So what does your Python environment look like? And how do you keep it from getting out of control? Share your setup in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Cloud AI Adventures. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, 
to catch future episodes as they come out. 